Hi there, in this video, I wanna share with you my number one tip for making better custom GPTs. So uh, I've been playing around with custom GPTs for the last few months. I've been made a, uh, about a dozen of them. Uh, if you're watching this video, you've probably been experimenting with them and I suspect you're watching this video because you're kind of frustrated. You're not getting your custom GPT to behave uh, the way that you want to. Um, and I was having that same frustration until I discovered one really simple trick to creating better custom GPTs, custom GPTs that do what you want them to do, uh, that follow your instructions better. And the main problem that I think uh, people are running into and what I was running into is when you go to create your first custom GPT or your second or your third, you're probably looking at something that looks like this, right? So it's saying, hi, I'll help you build a new GPT. Um, what would you like to make, right? And you start having a conversation uh, with ChatGPT about what it is you'd like to do. So maybe in my case, I want to upload some of my course handouts and I say, I would like you to make a tutor bot for my students that will answer questions about my data visualization course based on the attached handouts. Okay, and then it'll typically uh, do the basic setup. It'll suggest a name for the tutor bot. Uh, it'll come up with a picture. Uh, you can say that's fine. Uh, and then on the right hand side, you've got uh, a version of your custom GPT uh, that you can start uh, testing out. Um, and it maybe ask you some other questions about like how should it deal with, um, you know, should it ask for clarification, things like that. Say it should ask for clarification, right? And, and you sort of have a little bit of this sort of back and forth chat with ChatGPT to create your custom GPT and then you have it on the right hand side and then you start sort of playing around with it, right? So maybe I wanna sort of say, you know, it's already suggesting some um, prompt questions. Can you explain the concept of data skewness? You know, I click on that, see what kind of research response it gets. Um, and then it gives me this answer about, you know, uh, different types of skewness and positive skewness and negative skewness. Uh, the problem is there is nothing in my course materials that talks about skewness. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why it put that as one of the basic uh, suggested things. Uh, and it's giving answers that are based on its general knowledge, um, not based on what I uploaded. And this is a problem that I've discussed in some other lectures. Uh, so, you know, I might add an instruction, something along the lines of, you know, uh, please make sure that all of your answers are based on the uploaded course materials and not your general knowledge. Okay, and it says now the bot will ensure all responses are strictly based on the uploaded course materials. I can try that data skewness question again. And it's still giving answers that are based on its general knowledge, right? Um, and, and this is something that I spent way too much time on, I would keep on basically saying, come on, do this, do this, do this. And it would say it was done it, but it hadn't really done it. And it was driving me bananas. Um, and, and what it took me a while to appreciate is that uh, I was in the wrong tab. I should not have been creating, I should have been configuring. And if you go to the configure tab, um, it looks a lot more kind of structured. You've got the name of your bot, uh, a description of what it does, uh, an instruction set, conversation starters, any uploaded knowledge, and then what aspects of ChatGPT you want your bot to have access to, like web search or image generation or things like that. Um, and what I didn't really appreciate until quite recently is that <clears throat> when you're having this back and forth conversation in the create window, all ChatGPT is doing is changing what is in this window, okay? So, and you can actually see this happen. Like this is the current sort of instruction set for the tutor bot. Um, if I add something here and say, you know, it still seems like you're using your general knowledge, it's really important that you um, only base your responses on the course handouts. Please, after each response, mention what handout your response is based on, right? I do something like that. Um, when you see that little kind of, um, gear there and it's updating the GPT, what it is updating is what is in here. Um, and, and we can sort of see how it has translated my sort of back and forth conversation. You know, you are a tutor bot specialized in assisting students, offer explanations where applicable, you know, and then it sort of says avoid using general knowledge or external references. All answers must be based on the uploaded course material. After each response, explicitly state which section or topic of the uploaded course handouts the information is derived from. And what I've discovered 
is that trying to get ChatGPT to do what you want it to do in the create window is a lot harder than just telling it what to do in the instruction window. This is essentially, as best I can figure out um, in terms of how custom GPTs work, this is kind of like an evergreen prompt. This prompt is kind of like always there when in the background when someone is using your custom GPT. Um, and if you're finding that there's some aspect of what ChatGPT is doing that's not following your instructions properly, it's actually a lot easier just to put the instructions directly in here. And then you can add kind of stronger language. Uh, you can repeat yourself a little bit more. So instead of sort of saying, avoid using general knowledge, I could say something like, it is very important that you never base your responses on anything but the course material. If you are asked about something that is not in the course material, refuse to answer, right? And then I can also change these conversation starters. It just made the conversation starters for me, right? Um, but I can sort of pick ones that are better for mine, like what are the best chart types to use, right? What's the best way to download data from StatsCan, right? Things like that. Um, and then I can sort of um, see, like if I sort of say, what is data skewness? Right, now it's saying the concept of data skewness is not covered in the provided course materials. Now it's still, it's still winging it a little bit, right? But it's not kind of giving this huge overarching response the way it was uh, before, right? And 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 um, you could even put stronger language in here. Um, and what I've really discovered is I think it's not a bad idea for your very first custom GPT or for the first 20 minutes when you're building it to use create because you know you may not have a really great sense of how prompting language works and, and ChatGPT will do at least a basic job of taking your kind of rough ideas of what it is you want and translating it into prompting kind of language. But then once you've kind of got the basics, I, I find it is so much more effective um, to just edit directly in the configure window. Um, in particular, if, if the custom GPT is doing something you don't like, I find it, it's often very, very hard to use this kind of create window to get stuff taken out of those instructions, whereas you can just delete the instructions, right, from the instruction set. Um, using configure instead of create also uh, makes your life a lot easier when it comes time to kind of duplicating your work. So I'm doing a lot of work right now on how ChatGPT can be used in education. And I'm I'm sort of building tutor bots like this and uh, quiz bots um, for various different courses, uh, partnering with some other uh, instructors. Um, and what I've discovered is when I get an instruction set in the configure window that works really, really well, rather than starting from scratch on a new bot, if I'm gonna make another quiz bot or another tutor bot, I'll just copy all this language directly into the new bots um, uh, instruction window and then edit it as needed for the specific thing that I'm doing like okay this one's actually a, uh, a quiz bot about uh, history or this one's a quiz bot about marketing or something like that um, and and it allows you to sort of once you get a prompt that's working really really well you can use that prompt language uh, that exact prompt language in other contexts and what I've discovered is that this is really what is driving the custom GPT and so if you were to copy that um, instructions over to a new custom GPT and you uploaded the same document, the responses you would get would basically be the same. I mean, obviously, obviously all chat GPT responses are a little bit random, but it would essentially function in the same way. You also can explicitly say what aspects of uh, chat GPT's um, capabilities you want it to have. I've noticed, for example, that if I really want um, to make sure that my custom GPTs are basing their responses only on the documents that I've uploaded, I'll actually turn off web search. So I won't allow it to access external information. And that makes it even more likely that it's going to uh, base things just on uh, the uploaded course material. So number one tip, um, other than just your initial experiments with custom GPT, configure, don't create. Configure is the best way to build your custom GPT get it to do exactly what you want it to do. If it's not listening to you, put some stronger language in here, repeat yourself a few times if you need to. If the custom GPT is doing something you don't want it to do, make sure that there's no language in there telling it to do that. If there is, you can just take it right out. It's a much more efficient, uh, much more effective way of getting your custom GPT to do what you want it to do than trying to do it in the sort of indirect way 
uh, of the create window where basically it's the create window is kind of indirectly trying to edit here. Just edit it yourself. I uh, hope this was helpful. If you got tips that you've come across uh, using custom GPTs or ChatGPT in general, or you got a question, uh, put it in the comments and all the usual stuff about subscribing and things like that. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks very much.